Hey, all you health professionals out there. So in the last few days, I've had a lot of students ask me about my take on the novel coronavirus and why it's so dangerous. So I thought I'd put together a quick video here and, and, and give you my take on it. So I'll lay out the five most compelling points. Number one, it's dangerous. You see the outbreaks happening simply because it's a new pathogen. Our far superior adaptive immunity never catches it. Number two, the coronavirus symptoms are essentially the same as many other upper respiratory infection type symptoms. Thus, it's very hard to identify without clinical testing. Number three, we associate severe symptoms with danger, but the novel coronavirus also causes no to mild symptoms, leaving us unaware even after we contract it. Number four, we often think of staying away from others only after our symptoms arise. Some people are familiar with the incubation periods, but no one seems to be thinking about the contagious period. Number five, it's new. We don't know all the answers to some of the most critical questions simply because it's new. All right, so let's delve right in. First of all, we've lived with influenza for thousands of years. As a unit, globally speaking, we've built immunity to many seasonal flu strains. We have many different memory B cells and T cells roaming around in our tissues that can remember a previous exposure and are now on their toes ready to initiate a swift attack. This is the result of the continuous flu exposure and thus only 1.3 people contract the flu from each new patient. But the coronavirus is a new pathogen and three people contract the novel coronavirus from each new patient. Why? While we do have from our innate immunity phagocytes and natural killer cells probing our tissues, they are not looking for that specific pathogen as B cells and T cells do because it's brand new. The first response, as we are seeing with coronavirus, is so much slower. So let's talk fatality rates for a second. The flu fatality rate is around 0.1%. Now, for coronavirus, the numbers are still pouring in, but it seems it can be as high as 3.5%. But if we just take the average of, say, 2%, it still makes it 20 times more deadly than the seasonal flu. The second reason is that coronavirus could be mistaken for the flu. What do you do when you get the flu? You take some zinc, you take some vitamin C, although usually it's already too late for vitamin C, and you take some fever reducing meds and you wait it out with the assumption that everything's gonna be under control because that's generally the case. You generally don't go to the hospital or anything. Now, there can be a difference between the two, but each individual responds differently, and this can add to the mix-up between the two, influenza or coronavirus. The third reason is that in many coronavirus cases, the infection is mild with little to no symptoms. This means you can be transmitting the virus to hundreds of people without ever knowing, and these people could end up dying. You could be the reason and never even know it. Community spread is hard to track. It's hard to know who got it from who and who has it if people don't even know they're, they're carrying it. And this leads me to my last point. What is this contagious period? We know a little bit about the incubation period and the latent period, but what is it, why is it so critical? So let's lay out these periods first using the example of the influenza virus and then compare it against the coronavirus. If we draw out a graph here showing infection over time, the incubation period is the time from contracting the virus to the beginning of showing symptoms. For the flu, the incubation period can be anywhere from one to four days, but it's typically 48 hours, so let's use that in our example here. This means that for two days, a virus is hijacking your cells to replicate before you even begin to notice and feel sick. Well, from the time we begin to feel sick to the time our fever and chills and sniffles is gone, this is what we call the disease period, dis-ease. And with the flu, this is generally another seven days after the incubation period has ended. 
The next period is the most overlooked because it begins before the onset of any symptoms. Yet, it's the most critical because it marks the time when you can actually transmit the disease. From the beginning of being infectious to the end of being infectious, this is the contagious period. Or you can say the period of communicability. This is when your nose starts running and you got a sore throat and you distance yourself to keep your friends and family from contracting it, but unfortunately, it's very likely you've already infected them because you've already been in the infectious period for a day or even two days or three days. Finally, the last period is the latent period. This is the time from contracting the virus to the time we become infectious. Okay, now that we've laid out these flu periods, let's compare them to the periods of the coronavirus. As the data comes in, we're seeing that the incubation period is around 5 days, but it, in some cases it can be as long as 14 days. So let's use that here in our example. So why is this so significant? Because it makes it harder to track and know who should self-quarantine. Which is why it's a good thing that governments have slowed down and shut down businesses and schools. It's really the best way. The disease period, or you can say the symptoms, generally lasts for 14 days, but in extreme cases it can take up to 6 weeks to recover. And this puts a huge strain on hospitals and clinics resources. The last and most critical point I want to make is, despite the documenting of thousands and thousands of cases of Middle East Respiratory Syndrome coronavirus and SARS over the past 20 years and now COVID-19, we're still not exactly sure how long the contagious period is. It seems to start around the disease period, but we're not entirely sure. And even with the contagious period starting even a few days before the disease period begins, this is enough to wreak havoc, which is what we're seeing today. So how do we fight this thing? Isolate ourselves as much as we can without going out of our minds as we're prisoners in our own home. Go outside, go hiking, go backpacking, go camping, get some fresh air. Try to find the positive in all this and we'll beat it and we'll come out stronger. I took a picture of these two last spring. Hope you like it. Alright, thanks everyone for watching and be safe.